Welcome to Data Viz Dev Talk. I'm your host, Minhas Kazi. Our today's guest is Sarah Lu. Sarah lives in Toronto, Canada, and attends McMaster University. There, she is working towards a Bachelor of Commerce, majoring in marketing. Sarah is also one of the winners of the Visualize 2030 contest. With Sarah's love for animals and passion for the environment, she was excited to create a visual story that would drive awareness to these important causes. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So tell the audience about a little bit about yourself. Um, what are you busy with these days? Yeah, so um, I'm currently a commerce student at McMaster University, and I am currently on internship. So I will be returning to school for my last year in the fall. Once I graduate, I'll hopefully be looking to start my career in something in marketing or maybe something in the digital space. So how did you become interested in data visualization in the first place? So at my organization currently where I'm interning, I have had a couple of opportunities to create different dashboards using Data Studio. So um, for instance, a sales performance dashboard and a dashboard on seeing where our leads are coming from. So that is what um, forced me to learn more about data visualization. But also we collectively as an organization, we occasionally do data visualization for fun and to practice our skills. So being able to see other people's more creative works of data visualization is what really got me excited to try it myself as I like creating things that are visually appealing and fun to look at. So that was what really um, excited me to learn more. What has been your experience with Data Studio? You mentioned that at the organization you're working at, that's where you got introduced to the tool, but as you've used it more and more, um, what do you think about it? What has been your um, overall experience with this? Yeah, so Data Studio is a great tool. It's basically the only data visualization tool that I use because it's so simple to use and it's really easy to get started. And you really just get this blank canvas and you can go wherever you want. You can make something very simple and plain and just get right to the point, or you can do something completely different and creative and turn it into like, kind of like a piece of art, but also showing data. So that's what I really love. And like I said, with the drag and drop features and the different filtering options, you can really completely transform a basic chart into something that's interactive um, and something that just kind of goes with the flow of what you're trying to tell in your narrative. Congrats on being one of the five winners of the Visualize 2030 contest. Thank you. Can you take the audience through the visualization that you built? Like, um, tell them about the stro story that you're trying to tell throughout this entire uh, dashboard. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get into it and I can go through that. So here's my data visualization that I submitted. So I focused on a total of four of the sustainable development goals. So I discussed how by achieving the one goal, um, one of the targets in the zero hunger goal is to improve our agricultural practices and make them more sustainable. So by achieving this one, we can work towards three other goals of climate action, life on land, and having clean water and sanitation available to everyone. So as I was going through, I realized that agriculture doesn't just affect the actual climate change, but it affects so many different things in our environment. So I wanted to display this as a little roadmap that we can work towards achieving these goals in a future state and the different roadblocks that are getting in the way of actually achieving them. So for instance, agricultural um, practices they contribute to many greenhouse gas emissions and we can see that they increase over time. And in regards to livestock production in particular, as it increases around the globe in every single, in almost every country, we can see that there is a positive correlation between livestock production as well as the total greenhouse gas emissions in our atmosphere. And when we focus on life on land, we can see that here in 1990, the agricultural land and forest area were almost equal in regards to arable land. But if we move to 2015, you can see that there is a significant difference between agricultural and forest area land use. And I focus in on some different case studies to see how there are different habitat losses because of the land that is being used for agricultural purposes rather than forest. And in regards to water resources, I focus on some different case studies as well and how a majority of water uses for certain countries are used for agriculture, even if they have water stress already. 
So at the end here, I just offered some different calls to action on what we can do to achieve these goals. And by limiting our meat consumption and using less land for agriculture and less water for agriculture, we can really work towards achieving all four of these goals in the future. What do you think about Data Studio as a tool for anyone who's trying to tell their own story and trying to bring about social change? Yeah, so like I said, because Data Studio is very easy to get started with and it's also free to use, anyone, especially if you're in a nonprofit or if you're doing a charity, you may not have the funds to invest in a, a, an ex, uh, a complex data visualization tool. Data Studio allows anyone to learn more about data visualization and to actually put their data into visualization. So I think it's a great tool, um, especially for those purposes. And because just data visualization in general, when you're putting the data into visual visuals, it's very easy for anyone to understand. So you could literally just have a chart and pretty much anyone can look at a bar chart and see that one is way bigger than another um, and especially when it comes to things like language barriers and just different knowledge of understanding when it comes to data this is a great way to get your message out there to everyone regardless of how familiar they actually are with data visualization and it's also a great way to get your story out there really quickly because you can go from explaining in a paragraph form of why this is is that way and that could take like several minutes or you could simply just glance over at a chart and pull insights instantly and data studio makes that really easy to construct and get out there and then again with the interactive features that just makes it so much uh, it completely changes the experience of the person who's viewing the visualization what would be your advice for folks who want to tell their own data stories what kind of um, tips would you give them yeah, so I would say definitely look at some other examples online to get some inspiration on how you actually want to construct your data story and what's the best way to show what you're trying to say. Um, but I would also say rather than just copying something that you see online, definitely go into the tool, whether you're using Data Studio or something else, just go in there, look at the blank canvas and play around with it and see what it is you're trying to show and really focus on what you're trying to tell and you can really frame the order of your story exactly in the story that you're trying to tell. So again, when you're going through and constructing, just think that you're telling a story to someone that you know and construct the visualization in that order. Sarah, thank you again for being on the show. You can learn more about the Visualize 2030 contest and look at the winning visualizations in the links in the description. For more Data Studio content, be sure to subscribe to the GCP channel. And you can always visit our site at developers.google.com slash data studio. Until next time, keep building more viz.